we have a different history in Europe. We have limits to freedom of speech when it comes to uh, inciting uh, hatred and violence with the Holocaust and well, we know what, what hateful speech can lead to. Therefore the, the limits that we set with regards to hatred and violence uh, are a consequence uh, of this. We have Europe-wide legislation on racism and xenophobia in place since uh, 2008 which uh, criminalizes, for example, uh, Holocaust denial inciting to violence and hatred and uh, criminalizes incidents uh, with a racist bias. Uh, we've seen a consistent rise in anti-Semitic incidents over the past years um, in various EU countries, which is due on the one side to a rise of populism and the fact that thereby uh, hate uh, speech becomes more normal. Then also you have less barriers probably to control uh, hate speech. We've been seeing uh, a significant rise of uh, hate speech uh, online and uh, in Europe in contrast to the uh, US. I think that certainly uh, anonymity or the possibility not to say something directly in uh, another person's face has uh, increased uh, hate speech. We brought together uh, the big internet companies, uh, Twitter, Facebook, Microsoft and YouTube. Uh, to discuss uh, and to negotiate with them a code of conduct whereby they voluntarily agree that they revise and if necessarily remove within 24 hours any hateful content that is illegal according to European law and is flagged to them. The thing that really drives me is um, to arrive at some point at a normality. Jewish life in Europe um, is just is again completely part of it without any restrictions that uh, Jews can live the lives they want to live in Europe uh, whether they are observant or secular, whether they want to go uh, to Jewish schools or to uh, public schools and to uh, ideally live uh, without security in the long time.